Pandemic by AS Geek 2012 Chapter 14 Confrontation Celestia stepped onto the balcony and into the long, deep red-orange light of sunset. The sun hung just above the horizon, awaiting her touch to end another day. She held her lips in a small smile, the best that she could muster despite how this task still delighted her even after several millennia. As she reached the railing, she heard the soft clop of her sister's hoof falls behind her. Luna had been oddly, compliant since she had awoken. The word wasn't quite the right one, Celestia realized, but it was sufficient. Luna seemed to be doing everything to avoid debate or disagreement. Celestia's horn glowed, and the sun slowly sank. She flicked her eyes towards Luna as the midnight blue pony stepped beside her. A bit for your thoughts, dear sister, said Celestia softly. Luna slowly smiled. Perhaps I truly have none this evening. Nonsense, said Celestia in what she hoped was a playful tone. You always have something which preoccupies you. Please, do share. Luna watched the sun sink for a few moments before she finally said, Perhaps I am concerned about Twilight. In what way? You've placed a rather large responsibility in her hooves. The sky deepened, and the horizon faded to a dusky orange as the last of the sun disappeared. Celestia turned to her sister. I assume you speak of her negotiations with the changelings. Luna stepped forward, her horn glowing. Whatever else would I mean? She said gently. It is not like you to worry about how Twilight will handle a task. You generally have as much confidence as I that Twilight will come through. The sky slowly darkened, and the first sliver of the moon appeared at the horizon. Perhaps, then, I am worried over nothing. Thank you for setting me straight in the matter. Celestia stepped closer to her sister. Dear Luna, was that sarcasm by any chance? It is, admittedly, a little hard to tell with you. Luna remained silent, apparently in concentration as she raised the moon. Sparkling points of light appeared as the sky darkened towards full night. Perhaps I was merely concerned that Twilight still had her mind on other matters. I see, said Celestia as she turned away from the railing. And yet I still trust her ability to refocus her attention. Luna said nothing as she completed raising the moon. She continued to stare at it even after the glow of her horn had faded. Celestia looked thoughtful. Would it help to know that things will be set right quite soon, dear sister? Luna turned towards her. Come again? What will be set right? Celestia chuckled. Please, don't play dumb. You're not very good at it. You know perfectly well what I mean. Very well, said Luna. Are you saying that you have a solution to the quandary of the anomaly along old Canterlet Way? Yes. Luna paused. Well, that is good to hear. Celestia had seen the look of surprise on Luna's face despite her attempt to suppress it. I will be implementing it by morning. Then if you intend to be up late, perhaps I can assist. Actually, I intend to do it closer to sunrise. Said Celestia. And I am sorry, but this is not something you can assist with. Luna forced a smile. I do admit it was an excuse to learn exactly what the mystery behind this is. If you are still interested, you are welcome to ask me come morning, and I will tell you. Luna gave her sister a confused look. Why would I not be interested? I imagine Twilight would be as well when she returns. If after today, no one sees the anomaly as a threat, there will be no reason to pursue it, said Celestia. And yet you're saying that if we are still interested, you will tell us. Yes. I promise. Pinky promise. Celestia chuckled. Very well, dear sister. If you or Twilight are still interested in this anomaly come sunrise, I will tell you both everything. Cross my heart, hope to fly, stick a cupcake in my eye. Luna nodded slowly. This is good to hear, Tia. Pardon my bluntness but I am glad you have come to your senses on the matter. All I had asked for was a little time, said Celestia. 
and now that I have been granted such, I am prepared to solve the matter. Then, perhaps, Twilight will consent to take up the task I had asked of her. Luna hesitated. What task? Why, concluding the changeling negotiations of course. She will be much more eager to do it once this is over. Tia, you already sent Twilight. Celestia chuckled. Dear Luna, I know her all too well, almost as well as I know you. She's not on her way to the Changeling Conference. She's planning something, something that is simply unnecessary. Luna's mind raced. Assuming what you say is true, then would it not be prudent to speak to her tonight? I need to conduct this in my own way and time. Have I not already made my pinky promise to you? Luna went over the promise in her head, as if trying to find some way her sister could wriggle out of it. I suppose you have, she said in a cautious voice. Celestia turned and started off the balcony. Then I request you send a letter to Twilight informing her of my intentions. Luna remained still and stared at her sister. Why do you not do this yourself? Celestia stopped and turned towards her. I know you've been colluding with her, Luna, Celestia said in a subdued voice. And I imagine she's lost some faith in me. She likely trusts you right now more than she does me. Luna stepped towards her. And would this not be the perfect time to rectify that? I will, when I tell her everything that has happened. In the morning. Luna sighed. I do not understand why you insist on waiting. And yet, is it that much of a hardship? No, I suppose not, Luna said in a flat voice. Then, please, send your missive, said Celestia as she trotted forward. Then we may partake of dinner, and I can retire for the night. Yes, of course, Tia. Asterisk. Shafts of deepening sunset light stretched across the length of the tavern, glinting off the seven steins of apple cider and one glass of lemonade that the server carried in her magical aura. She approached the table and set down each of the drinks, all the while her gaze flicking from patron to patron. No sooner than her eyes fixed on one did they simply slide off as if she knew these were no more than nondescript ponies not worth even worrying about. She accepted the bits from a unicorn she was sure she had never seen before and would never see again. She would be hard-pressed even to remember what her cutie mark looked like. At least the unicorn tipped well. Anything else? The server dutifully asked. No, thank you, we're good, said the unicorn in a voice as nondescript as her appearance. The server shrugged and headed away. Under the veil of the incognito spell, rainbow-eyed twilight. So this is your plan? Sitting in a bar in Canterlot out in plain view. Not at all in plain view, rainbow, said twilight with a smile. We won't be recognized so long as starlight's spell is in force. Fluttershy's eyes darted from side to side. Um, are you sure this spell is really hiding us? Positive said Starlight. It's the same spell I used on myself while I was, um, observing Twilight prior to our little altercation. Ya mean while ya were stuck in her, Applejack deadpanned. Uh, yeah, if you must put it that way, Starlight murmured. Oh, the sacrifices I make. Rarity said. To not be recognized for who I am in the heart of the fashion district of Canterlot but I suppose it's better than traversing some dusty caves. It's not better, it's boring. Rainbow said. Why can't we just stick to the original plan? Because I don't like the idea of breaking into the palace, declared Twilight. I've already explained this to Starlight. I don't want to treat Celestia as the enemy. This still seems deceptive to me, said Applejack. We're still sneaking about like some kind of bandits. It's only until we get to the palace. I just don't want to give Celestia any warning that we're coming. So we're not breaking into Princess Celestia's archive either. Rainbow groaned. Not in the sense that we're going to force our way in, said Twilight. We're going to walk in. That still don't sit right with me, Chui, said Applejack. It still seems like stealin'. Except we won't be, not really 
explained Twilight. Yes, we'll be removing the spell anchors from her archive, but we won't take them any further than Celestia's office. We then summon her and explain what we know and convince her to break the spell. What if she refuses? Asked Fluttershy. Twilight glanced towards the window as the sun set. Then we take matters into our own hooves, said Twilight in a low voice. We break the spell ourselves. And if Princess Celestia tries to stop you? Asked Starlight. I'm hoping she won't. That don't answer the question, said Applejack. Maybe it's something I don't want to contemplate, said Twilight. I can't believe Celestia would pit herself against me. As powerful as you are, darling, I'm not sure you want to find out of if you'd ever win a confrontation like that, said Rarity. Twilight cast a sad look at her. It's not that. Just the act itself would be devastating, and I don't mean in a magical sense. This is not about winning, it's about... Pinky abruptly gasped and leapt out of her seat, her eyes wide. She hung in the air for a few moments in blatant defiance of gravity before falling back into her seat. Pinky, is everything okay? Twilight asked. Pinky smiled. Wow, did some pony in Canterlot make a huge Pinky promise? Uh, how would you even know that? Rainbow asked. Normally, I don't. Weird, hey. Rainbow rolled her eyes. Look, can I at least pick an argument with a royal guard just to say I did something interesting? Twilight face hoofed. Rainbow, how many times do I have to explain this? I want as little confrontation as possible. But now that she mentioned it, what about the royal guard? Starlight asked. Won't they say something to Princess Celestia when they see us in the palace? That's why I want to wait until Celestia is in bed, said Twilight. Even if they do go to rouse her, it will still give us a little more time. Starlight smirked. They won't say anything if I zap them with. No, Twilight declared. Starlight sighed. Fine, do it the hard way, then. You're still missing the point. This isn't about. Spike belched green fire and he grabbed the scroll that materialized before him. He partially unrolled it. It's from Princess Luna. Twilight's eyes widened. I was expecting Luna to send me word when Celestia retired for the evening, but this is rather early. She grasped it in her magic and unrolled it. Dear Twilight, Celestia has promised that she will disclose all details of the anomaly in the morning. She has surmised that you might be planning something. Wait. What? Rainbow cried. So much for secrecy, Starlight muttered. Thus she requests that you reconsider your course of action, Twilight continued. Please think on this for a while, Twilight. Sincerely, Princess Luna. So, um, now what? Fluttershy asked. Sounds like the princess came to her senses without us having to skulk about, said Applejack. Rainbow propped her head up with a hoof. Yeah. We. Starlight frowned and turned to Twilight. Do you actually believe her? Twilight stared at the scroll. I want to believe her. I want to give her a chance, but. I I don't know. What's the danger in giving her that chance? Asked Applejack. An avoidant a fight neither of you want. But why did Luna send this? said Twilight. Why didn't Celestia send it? Unless she's just playing more games with you, Starlight muttered. Twilight read the scroll again. Please think on this for a while, she murmured. She looked up. All right, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm sorry. Said Rarity. Luna may have had to send this with Celestia looking over her shoulder, said Twilight. This may be her way of telling me to hold off on making a decision just yet. So what do we do? Asked Fluttershy. Twilight rolled up the scroll. We wait. Great, Rainbow moaned. Asterisk. Luna's usual nighttime routine consisted of holding night court until around midnight, then spending the remainder of the night dream walking. 
Yet after hearing only one petition that evening, Luna found herself too distracted to continue. As the noble pony left the room, she called tight schedule into her presence. We have quite the full docket tonight, princess, said tight without looking up from her clipboard. I suggest that you next entertain the motion from. I am considering suspending the remainder of the proceedings tonight, said Luna. Tight's head snapped up, her ears drooping. May I ask why? I have much heavier matters on my mind. Surely you have time to entertain at least one or two more nobles, said Tight. Otherwise you will be swamped into next week. Or worse, they'll show up at day court. Luna frowned. Something about the way her sister had worded the pinky promise still bothered her, which delayed her from sending the all-clear message to Twilight. She hoped Twilight had noticed her subtle clue about waiting before deciding to abandon her plans. I preside over night court, therefore it is my decision and responsibility alone. Tight frowned. Very well, Princess, I just hope this won't get back to Princess Celestia. I would not concern yourself with that. I will apprise her of the situation in the morning. I dare say you won't have to wait that long, Tight muttered. Luna raised an eyebrow. What did you mean by that? I saw Princess Celestia a short while ago. Luna's eyes widened. You saw her? Where? Tight was taken aback enough by the vehemence of the question that she just stared for a few seconds. Um, well, she was headed for the Canterlet archives. What part of the archives? Luna demanded. Tight's pupil shrank. I, I am not sure. I. Come, come, tight schedule, it is your job to remember small details. Luna thundered. What section was she headed towards? Tight swallowed hard. The H High Magic section, Princess. You will inform the nobles that Night Court is temporarily suspended, said Luna. Do everything you can to keep the nobles here. Under no circumstances is any pony to even think that Night Court has been cancelled. I will return. Of course, princess, said a confused tight schedule as Luna galloped away. It had finally clicked in Luna's head exactly what part of the phrasing of Celestia's promise had bothered her, if you or Twilight are still interested in this anomaly come sunrise, I will tell you both everything. If you or Twilight are still interested. Luna entered her quarters, grabbed a blank scroll and quill, and began to write. Dear Twilight. Asterisk. I fear I must warn you of what I believe is my sister's true intention, said Twilight with a slight quaver to her voice as she read Luna's letter while they walked a dark side street in Canterlot. I hope I am wrong, but I believe Celestia plans on not only renewing the spell, but making you, me, and your friends, forget that the anomaly ever existed. What? Rainbow cried. She can't do that. Uh, I think she can said Spike. She did it once already. Twilight lowered the letter, her eyes glistening. Spike is right. She has more than enough power to pull off such a spell. She's already done it before and suppressed the memories of hundreds of ponies. What's a few more? She can't do it if we use our rainbow power. Said Rainbow. We can't maintain that forever. At some point, we have to relinquish it and then the spell will affect us. Can you shield against it? Spike suggested. It's the same problem, Spike, said Twilight. I can't keep it up forever. What's the chance that Princess Luna is wrong, Chui? Asked Applejack. I don't know, said Twilight. But Luna knows her sister better than any pony in Ekestria. I, I don't want to think that she would do something like this but can I take the chance? I say we don't, said Rainbow. Let's go in there and get those diaries. I agree with her, said Starlight. If we don't do this now, we'll never be able to do it. I, I don't want us to cause trouble, said Fluttershy. But I don't want a spell wiping my memories, either. I most certainly do not. Rarity declared. That is simply a step too far. 
and I don't ever want to forget anything I ever did with my friends. Pinky said. Chui, I'm with you whatever you decide now, said Applejack. When Discord messed with my head that time, I vowed that was the last time I'd ever let some pony do that to me again. All right, said Twilight in a firm voice as she rolled up the scroll. We'll get to the palace as soon as we can. I'll mass teleport us if I have to. She paused. But first, I want to send a letter to Princess Luna. I have an idea. Asterisk. Celestia glanced around her as she entered the high magic section of the Canterlet archives. The library was dim and silent, her muffled hoof steps against the carpet the only sound. She came upon a sign that said Restricted Section, contact the Master Archivist for assistance. A simple velvet rope blocked the way. Celestia unhooked it from one of its posts and held it aloft long enough for her to pass before letting it fall back into place. A glow of her horn, and the lights rose enough for her to see the scrolls and books that packed the shelves. She advanced further, the tomes becoming less dense as she entered the dark magic section. The irony was not lost on her. Many had questioned why she would ever want to keep information on such forbidden magics. She had defended her decision by stating that all knowledge was precious, simply having knowledge was neither good nor evil, it all depended on what one did with it. Yet now she was about to use it specifically to continue hiding knowledge from others. She tried to use the same rationale that she had 21 years prior, that she had only the welfare of her ponies in mind. It was too soon for such information to re-enter the public eye. Luna had been only partially correct, while Celestia had intended to make Luna and others forget about the anomaly, she refused to touch Twilight's mind again. In the past, she had what she had believed to be a very good excuse, but it rang hollow now. Adult Twilight was nothing like full Twilight. Celestia just wanted a chance to fix things before she had to admit to her failings. Celestia found the correct scrolls and levitated them to the lectern. As she read, memories tugged at her aching heart, yet she resisted falling into a useless cycle of what if. Just as she fought her inner demons to an acceptable stalemate, her head whipped around when she heard a noise. She frowned and rolled up the scroll with a snap as Soft Hoof Falls approached. What are you doing here? Celestia said in a curt voice. I could ask you the same thing, sister, said Luna, her lips twisted into a frown. But I think I already know. Celestia took a deep breath. When she spoke again, her voice was less hostile. How much does Twilight really know, Luna? Luna hesitated. Come now, sister. Don't you think this cloak and dagger has gone on long enough? You and she were never good at it to begin with. You should talk about such things, Tia, said Luna. It is you who started this. Now you sound like a foal on the playground. Teacher, she started it. Sarcasm does not become you. Nor does your defiance against me. Luna raised an eyebrow. And you think that is what this is about, just being defiant? Do you mistake me for Nightmare Moon? Celestia paused, her gaze softening. I am sorry, I did not quite mean it that way. Yet you have been acting like you expect us all to fall in line with your will. If you only understood how I felt about. Then educate us. Luna exclaimed. Stop keeping us in the dark. Can you not see how foolish you are acting? You never answered my question, said Celestia softly. How much does Twilight know? How much do you think she knows? Asked Luna. Please, don't play games. Why not? You've been doing it with us. Celestia remained silent and averted her eyes. You want the truth. Said Luna. My original intent in coming here was merely to distract you. Celestia's eyes snapped back to Luna's. Then Twilight is planning something. I need to go. Celestia tried to step around Luna, but Luna shifted position and stood in her sister's way. Listen to me, Tia. I was going to meet deception with deception. The original plan Twilight and I had worked out was yet another deception. 
even what she settled on is still a deception of sorts. This has to stop. Celestia swallowed hard. Don't you see what's happening? Luna said. You're letting your need for secrecy get out of control. Ekestria was built on harmony, not lies. What I did was to protect harmony. Celestia thundered, though her voice quavered. And to protect Ekestria. Don't you dare presume that I don't have my pony's interests at heart. Luna's eyes widened, and she backed up a step, but her sister had not taken advantage of the moment to get around her. I would never presume that, said Luna in a solemn voice. I believe that whatever you did, you had what you thought was a good reason. What I am questioning are your actions now, not then. You say the deception needs to stop, said Celestia her voice tinged with desperation. Then tell me what Twilight knows. Very well, said Luna. She knows of a pony named Sunset Shimmer, and that she is her aunt. She knows Sunset was once your student. She knows you cast a dark magic spell to suppress all record of her, as well as a mind magic spell to cover up the gaps in the historical record. She knows Sunset worked with both portal magic and transformation magic. Celestia's eyes shimmered. She knows all that. Luna smiled. You should be proud of her. She had little to go on other than her own faint memories and a set of hunches. I am proud of her, Celestia said in a small voice. Then honor that, Luna declared. Stop what you're planning to do and talk to her. Celestia remained silent, her eyes downcast. Tia. Twilight has agonized over her plans. She doesn't want to confront you, but she refuses to let this go any further, not when her own family is involved. Luna paused. I told you my original intent had been to distract you. That was until I received an urgent missive from Twilight. My being candid with you just now was her idea. Celestia raised her head. She, what? That's how much she values her friendship with you, said Luna in a softer voice. That's how much she still trusts you. She's giving you every chance in the world to see reason, knowing full well you will be forewarned and could stop her. Celestia glanced at the magic scrolls she still levitated off to the side. Her eyes misted. I need to do what I feel is right, Luna, she said in a flat voice. I, I have a greater good to consider. Luna sighed and lowered her head. I hope you can live with yourself, then. I likely won't be able to question you any more after tonight. Celestia let out a ragged sigh as she stepped around Luna. I'm returning to my room, she said in a quavering voice. Do not follow me, and do not disturb me. Luna bit back a response and simply watched her go with sad eyes. Asterisk. The quiet of Celestia's office was abruptly shattered by a brief explosion of displaced air. Papers flew from the top of the desk, and pencil holders tipped over, their contents clattering to the tiled floor. A portrait of Star Swirl the bearded on the back wall became skewed. Applejack swayed, placing a hoof to her forehead and splaying her other hooves to steady her. Woo, that was a mite rough. Fluttershy nearly swooned, and her face took on a greenish pallor her stomach rumbling ominously. Irk. I, I think I'm going to be sick. Starlight suddenly thrust a glass bottle in her face, pulling the cork free from the neck. Here, drink this. Fluttershy grabbed the bottle in her shaky forehooves and drank. Very soon, her face returned to a more healthy color. Oh, I think I feel better now, said Fluttershy. She smiled. Thank you. What incarnation was that? Applejack asked. Starlight took the empty bottle from Fluttershy. Oh, um, it's an old family recipe. Since I knew we might have to mass teleport once or twice, I whipped it up before we came here. She hesitated and ran a hoof through her mane. Um, seems like some pony in my family was notorious for upchucking every time she practiced teleportation until she got the hang of it. She blushed. Can't for the life of me remember who that was now. Applejack chuckled. Uh-huh. Sure. Still, that was mighty nice of ye. 
Sorry about that, every pony, said Twilight. I don't normally have to teleport that many ponies at once. Starlight looked around. Well, we're here. Where's Celestia's archive? Twilight glanced at Spike. Spike, please put the diary we brought on the desk if you would. She stepped up to the back wall. There's likely a hidden door in this wall. Her horn glowed. I can sense a room beyond this one. So how do we get in? Rainbow asked. That's easy. Said Pinky. Let's just drill through the wall. Sounds good to me. We are not destroying the office, Twilight declared. She slowly stepped along the back wall, horn still glowing. We're going to find the right place to enter. I must admit, this is rather exciting, said Rarity. Secret doors and passages are so much part of the latest Shadow Spade novels. Rainbow looked askance at her. You're not going to start narrating to some unseen audience while everything around you goes all noir, are you? Suddenly a large rectangle on the back wall glowed. I found it. Twilight cried. It's right here. Well, let's open it, then, said Starlight. I'm going to have to figure out how. There's likely some sort of sophisticated magical code. Rarity stepped up. Or you could try rapping on the wall to the right three times. I don't think it's that simple, said Twilight. It is if you read Shadow Spade. Twilight sighed. Rarity, I honestly don't think Celestia would put in. Starlight stepped forward and thumped her hoof on the wall three times. Something so ridiculously easy that reading a click. The rectangular panel swung inward. Shadow Spade novel would give you the answer. Twilight paused, stared at the opening, and face hoofed. Good going, Rarity. Said Applejack. How in the world did you know that would work? Twilight cried. Rarity smiled. Oh, just my sharpened investigative senses, darling, that's all. Pinky pointed a hoof towards a bookcase. And the fact that Princess Celestia has a whole shelf full of Shadow Spade novels. Rarity tossed her mane. Ahem. Yes, well, that, too. Fluttershy gasped as she glanced towards the door. I hear us somebody's coming. We need to get the spell anchors now, Twilight said. Starlight, you take the lead and find any books with mind magic in them. Those will be the ones we want. Uh, I'd love to, said Starlight. She poked the air before the open secret door. Magic flared and rippled. But we have a little problem. Twilight stared. A magic seal. Break through it. Rainbow cried. It's going to take me time we don't have. Oh, no. Fluttershy cried as she cantered away from the door when hoofbeats stopped just outside. This is what I didn't want, Twilight said. I didn't want a confrontation with. Twilight, if you're in there, please, let me in. Came a muffled voice from the hall. Twilight gasped and unlatched the door with her magic, throwing it open. Princess Luna. Luna rushed inside. Twilight, you don't have much time. Celestia is going to renew the spell as soon as she finishes researching the proper magic. It could be only minutes now. We can't get in, said Twilight, thrusting a wing towards the secret door. There's a magic seal across the entrance. It's going to take me ages to work out how to defeat it. Rainbow flew up. Then we make a stand right here. She can't renew the spell if she can't get into the archive. What stops her from teleporting in? Said Rarity. Twilight can cast a teleportation shield, said Starlight. I can help maintain it if she needs her magic to work the seal. All your plans are for naught, I am afraid, said Luna as she stepped forward. Tia has a secret passage from her room directly to her archive. I didn't want to say it, but I thought that as well, said Rarity. Classic shadow spade move. Twilight looked up at Luna. She felt more than a twinge of guilt, but she had no alternative. 
There is one pony here who can break this seal right now, said Twilight in a low voice. Luna uttered a despairing sigh. Well, who is it? Demanded Rainbow. That would be me, said Luna. I don't get it, said Starlight. No offense, princess, but I thought Celestia's magic was stronger than yours. It is, said Luna as she stepped up to the hidden door. But after I returned from the moon, Tia placed a failsafe within the walls of the palace. It was meant for the case of one of us needing to break a seal when the other was indisposed or in serious trouble. Then let's do it. Rainbow said. Luna frowned. This is not something to be taken lightly, Rainbow Dash. She had installed that failsafe not just for practical reasons, but as a show of faith and trust in me. I feel I am violating that now. I wished I had gotten through to Celestia when I spoke to her earlier. But if she ain't gonna come around, then we can't wait no longer, said Applejack. If all she has taught do is read some scrolls before she can cast the spell, we gotta hustle. Luna sighed. Very well. Her horn glowed, and she lowered her head slightly. Light flashed around the door. It is done. Starlight poked her hoof forward but encountered only empty air. Spell anchors coming right up. She said before disappearing inside. Twilight stepped over to Luna. Thank you for speaking with Celestia, I really appreciate it. Do not thank me, said Luna. I failed. But did you? Luna hesitated. I do not understand. Twilight looked around. If you hadn't gotten through to her at least a little, why isn't she here already? It is as I said, she needs to complete her readings to renew the spell, said Luna. Twilight shook her head. It doesn't take long for some pony of her ability to read a few scrolls for magic she's already familiar with. It's more like she's letting me do this. Twilight, that is a huge leap of faith. Yes, but that's what friendship is based on, said Twilight. Faith in your friends. Even after all that's happened, I still have faith in her. Got them. Came Starlight's cry. She emerged from the archive with sixteen books levitated around her, all bearing Celestia's cutie mark. Arrange them on the table, please, said Twilight. So now what? asked Fluttershy. Do we summon our rainbow power? A voice sounded at the door. That won't be necessary, kind Fluttershy. All ponies spun around. Twilight's breath caught in her throat. Celestia stood in the door. Her eyes were bloodshot, and the fur on her face was damp. For a few pregnant moments, no pony said a word. Celestia took a deep breath as if she were about to talk, but let it go as a shuddering sigh. Twilight swallowed hard. The speech she had carefully constructed and memorized for this occasion now seemed horribly irrelevant. Celestia, she finally said in a halting voice. We. I. I can't let this continue. We don't want a confrontation, we just. She tailed off. Words failed her as she stared at Celestia. Celestia stepped forward. Twilight sparkle, she said in a quavering voice. She glanced at her sister. I've. I've made a terrible mistake in deceiving you. And I almost just made another one. You were going to renew the spell said Twilight in a flat voice. Yes, Twilight. And wipe the memories of Luna, myself, and my friends of this anomaly. Not you. Twilight hesitated. I'm sorry. I never intended to include you. I was going to tell you about this once I took care of the anomaly. I was going to tell you everything. Twilight remained silent for a long moment. She glanced at her friends and exchanged a long look with Luna before finally turning her gaze back to her former mentor. And that's supposed to make me feel better. Celestia blinked and simply stared. So I get to be the privileged one, said Twilight, her voice rising. I get to be special. Meanwhile my grandparents go on thinking that they never had a daughter. And my father thinking he never had a sister. Twilight, 
I understand you're upset Celestia began. No, you don't understand. Twilight shouted. Or you wouldn't have done it in the first place. I'm not even sure if I'm really angry with you or just the situation. All I know is it can't go on. She turned, and her horn glowed. The covers of all the books on the desk flipped open. And it won't go on. I want my memories back. Celestia stepped forward. You'll have them back. Right now. Twilight paused before turning to face her. And your family, if that is what you want. Yes, that's exactly what I want, said Twilight. But I beg of you to let me limit it to just them, said Celestia. Let me explain, let me make you understand what happened and what I did, and why I did it. That's all I had wanted from the start, said Twilight. I'm sorry I yelled at you, Celestia. Celestia strode forward towards the open book. You have every right to be angry with me, Twilight. But I still wish to thank you. A very faint smile came to Twilight's muzzle. Thank her. Said Starlight. For what? For taking the chance and having Luna talk to me earlier. For having faith in me when I gave you little reason to do so. I'm sure you feared I could stop you in an instant. She looked over to Luna and gave her a small smile. Fortunately, Luna knows not to hold back when she feels her sister is being a fool. Twilight stepped up to her. Then I was right. You let me get this far. Indeed, I did, said Celestia. But only because I was too much of a coward to do it myself. Please, don't call yourself. No, Twilight, it's time we face the truth me most of all, Celestia declared. But let me do as I promised, and rid you and your family of this curse. She glanced over to the books. First, you will need all the anchors. E.R., what? Said Starlight. I thought I had all of them. Celestia gave her a warm smile. Not quite. Her horn glowed, and another book flew into the room from the archive. Unlike the others, its cover was less fancy and was embossed with a red and yellow sun. That's Sunset's cutie mark on the cover. Twilight exclaimed. Starlight stared. How did I miss that? Because this one has no mind magic on it, dear Starlight, said Celestia. So if we actually did try to remove the spell Twilight began. It would not have worked. Celestia placed the new book in the center and stepped up to the desk. Now, please, allow me to concentrate. The others gasped as tendrils of absolute black suddenly roiled up from each of the books like squirming tentacles, twisting and writing as if in pain. Celestia's horn blazed, and they shuddered at the light. Instead of recoiling, they were drawn towards it, as if being sucked in against their will. The tendrils converged around Celestia's horn, twisting and coiling around it as if trying to somehow strangle it. Celestia whipped her head up. The tendrils snapped and shot back into their books. The bits she had broken off dissipated as the glow of her horn died. It is done. Twilight. Spike cried, springing to her side when she suddenly swayed. You okay? Twilight trembled, raising a hoof to her forehead. I I am all right. I just... A sudden flood of not just memories but emotions overwhelmed me for a moment. I'll be okay. I fully intend to reveal all, said Celestia. But might I ask that we pick this up in the morning? Luna smiled. That would be more in keeping with your pinky promise to me. Pinky gasped. I knew some pony had made a huge pinky promise. Ha, it was Princess Celestia the whole time. We're going to hear the truth for sure. I'm fine with waiting until the morning, said Twilight. We'd all be better off with some shut-eye, said Applejack. Thank you for trusting me that far, said Celestia in a subdued voice. I know I have done little to have earned it lately. Let's not dwell on that right now, said Twilight. I don't want to blame any pony for this, I just want to understand. Thank you, Twilight. Thank you, every pony. 
you give me more consideration than perhaps I. A scroll suddenly popped into existence before her. She unrolled it and read. Dear Princess Celestia. Caddy and I will be in Canterlot by tomorrow afternoon. You and me have a lot to talk about. Yours. Shining Armor. Celestia sighed. Tomorrow is going to be a long day. 